Hey everybody, it's me again, and welcome back to part two of modeling and animating the new 2020 Spinosaurus. In the last one, it kind of ended a little bit abruptly whenever the program decided to crash on me, and I had to start over because <laughs> I didn't save throughout the project. But uh, yeah, I redid everything back to where we were before, and now here we are going back at it again. You can see me just tweaking some things and filling the inside of the mouth here now. Um, and then I'm going to cut the mesh in half later on to mirror it over once again since I make changes just to the one side and you'll see me have issues with the way I did it there because there's not a seam down the middle so if you are following this the way that I'm kind of doing it here then make sure you have all of your middle vertices uh, or the middle point of your model to all be vertices and not faces it'll save you a little bit of struggling later on that I'll have to deal with and correct but you can see me just kind of tweaking some things and moving my vertices closer and further apart from each other to get some definition and like the creases under the belly that you can see in my uh, reference image there and at the back of the tail behind the uh, the uh, what's that called like the big back leg so that's what I'm going through there and now I'm just trying to do some things with the head here you'll see me start to position the uh, the ring around the eye in a moment. Yes, here it goes here. So I was just subdividing that area. I should have just inserted an edge loop all the way through probably in hindsight, but oh well. It still works. So going in now, I'm just making a, the lining of where the teeth are a bit thicker so that they have like a root rooted area to set into. Uh, now I'm taking out this middle section and inserting a spear, which is where the eye will be. You don't actually connect these to the mesh, you have them separately, so that you can rotate those individually and not have to deal with weird skin weight issues that come with that. So here's me just starting to design the uh, fingers and then the uh, whole hand itself, really. Uh, you can see me just kind of extruding the generic finger shape and then I'll go in and right back out. Uh, it's hard to see in the fast forward time lapse here, but if you extrude in on itself and then back out, it creates kind of like this lip around it, which looks like where the uh, nail meets the, the claw. You can see it a bit better right there. And it just gives it a nice look. And then you can see me going in there to reconnect to the rest of the mesh. Had to do some troubleshooting for the Jurassic Dream Discord, so just to ignore all the flashing back and forth, sorry about that. And then the same process, but with the feet. And now here's where I begin to work on the teeth. Um, originally, I was just going to extrude them out the same way that I did the nails and everything. But really what would be a lot easier for me to do is to just design the like a model of the tooth separately and just have them placed in the uh, spot where they would be and not actually connected to the mesh, similar to the eyes. It just makes it easier on you in the long run, really. So yeah, here's that new model I made of a tooth, and I'm just going to place these where they are in the image. And I didn't cut out the part where I did the first method originally, just to show that, like, I don't know, you're not always going to get it right on your first try. Uh, it, it's just going to come down to experimenting with a couple different things and finding what works for you and what you're best at working with, really, so... Uh, it just kind of proves that like just because I'm kind of having this time lapse that you could follow along if you wanted to doesn't mean you have to do everything the same way that you see me doing it here. There's a bunch of different methods you could be using and probably better ones to be honest. And this is just the solution I came up with to having that like fleshy bit that connects the 
upper and lower jaw, I was looking at the model from the side and realized that I got a huge gap in the back where there's no uh, teeth. And it looks a bit funny because if you've ever seen a Jurassic Park movie or just any dinosaur thing in general, they have that fleshy bit there. So I was trying to find a way to add that in and that's the solution I came up with there. Here's me just trying to bulk up that back leg a bit. It was looking a bit small compared to the sheer bulk of the rest of the body, so I wanted to try and put some more muscle onto it, make it look a bit larger. Now I'm going in with the sculpt tool to try and smooth some things out and in a moment you'll see me just actually start to add some mass to the model right like right there to start sculpting with it and I hadn't ever really messed with them before so it's a little sloppy but it gets the job done. I, I've basically just gone in and added some depth to it with the add mass button. I'm not sure what, if that's actually what it's called or not and then I just go over it because it gets all lumpy and smooth it out so you get the bulk of it without the rigid lines. And a piece of advice for y'all that I should have been following myself, but I kept on forgetting every time it came around to the sculpting session, was to just make sure you have your mirror sculpting mode on. That way you don't have to go through and delete half the model and mirror it over again like I just did. You'll see me do that multiple times because I keep on forgetting to turn it on, and I don't realize that I forgot until it comes to time, until it comes time to mirror the model over. So... Don't be like me. There I go again with the not knowing how to activate my mirror sculpting button because But by this point, I I feel like you can start to see the models coming together pretty good. I'm I'm happy with where it's at right now. Uh, just kind of tweaking some things, just unnecessarily, but preferably personal preference to make it match up with the picture a bit more. I could leave it like this if I really wanted to, but I just went in for the extra little details. I wanted to add some creases there in the elbow joint and everything, just because I thought it would make it look nicer. And I'll go in with a couple other things as well. Uh, now here you can see me going in and putting some bones on the body. This is how you begin to animate is you need bones in your model to move around and manipulate to set your keyframes on and whatnot. So you can see me making the rig for it right here. Um, don't forget to name all of your joints and everything. Like you can see me doing that in the outliner on the left side of the screen there. 
it's uh, important because it just helps keep everything organized in the long run or else you'll have a ton of joints and bones and you just won't know really what's what if you're trying to select a specific thing in the side I'm going in and finishing off the fingers and toes before I just kind of put it up to the joint of the wrist or ankle and so now I'm going in for the further little extremity bits <laughs> And then just rinse, wash, and repeat the same process for your feet. Plus, in the past, I've seen people make models and they have all three toes like perfectly even and symmetrical. You don't necessarily have to change it, but I've never, I've never liked the way that that looked. Whenever they're all symmetrical and even, I've always thought of it as the middle toes. The longer one is a bit thicker than the two side smaller ones. That's just the way I've always seen it. So you could leave them all the same, but I went in there a second ago and kind of scaled them down just because that's the way I had always pictured it and seen it in the past, and I just wanted to stay true to what I knew and liked. Just personal preferences, though. Obviously, you don't have to follow that same thing. And right there, I just went into my skeleton tab and mirrored the joints over to, or excuse me the bones over to the other side that's another thing that's really helpful with naming all of your joints is if you finish them with underscore l and underscore r or i guess anything for that matter as long as you search for the correct term then you can take that duplicate it rename it to the right side and have it mirrored over and already pre-named for you so you don't have to go through and name them again but right here you can see me just making iks for for the legs which basically just means that if you move the foot, the other joints will move around in the way that they need to in order to get the leg in that position that would work for where the foot's location is. I'm not really sure how to word that for some reason, but I think you know what I mean. Here, the skin weights, I haven't even messed with them yet, but I just kind of put it in a somewhat of a position just to kind of like have a proof of concept sort of thing of kind of what it'll look at in the future. Like, I haven't even put in the bottom teeth yet, but I just wanted to kind of get some sort of picture of what this model could look like once I started to animate and finish it up a bit more. And there's my image there. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. I know this isn't the highest quality image here. But I'll be sure to go ahead and do the skin weights in my pastime. And catch y'all for the next video. Thank you.